Hey guys, my July 13th DVD update. I want to talk about all the DVDs and Blurries I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Now, like I always say, definitely give the video a thumbs up if you've been enjoying my DVD Blu-ray updates. And uh, let me know below what you've thought of any of the titles that I reviewed. You know, what your thoughts are on them. Or any suggestions for future um, movies to review and updates. I also want to let you guys know, too, I will be at Comic-Con. So if any of you guys see me there, don't be afraid to say hello. Now, the first one I got from Sony, and this really is... I think one of the best, probably pretty much almost the best horror remake. I, to me, I thought what it was was extremely well done. You know, like some of the other like really good remakes were like The Dawn of the Dead, Texas Chainsaw. Hills Have Eyes, though, I think was kind of right behind this as a really well done remake. And it's, you know, it's it's a remake, but they change a few things around. And there's also quite a, bit, quite a few things. There's also all these kind of rumors that it might technically be a sequel and there might be a, some connection to the originals. I don't know if that was rumors or if that's going to be a fact because I know they're going to be making a sequel to this. And they've announced down the line, so, so they say, and they're doing a second Army of Darkness, but it's the Evil Dead remake. You know, I really thought this was an extremely creepy one. And the basic, you know, idea of it is it's a girl who goes with her brother and her friends out to the cabin and she's been addicted to drugs and they take her out there to try and detox her. And, you know, she's had numerous drug problems in the past. They've tried to do things in the past. We're trying to get her off drugs. Never works. It always ends up back on it again. And, you know, they take her out there and the guy, you know, the kids end up finding the book of the dead in the basement, you know, and the one guy ends up reading from it, and you know, you know the story with ends up what ends up happening to people. I don't want to say everything that happens, but you know, she ends up becoming possessed and is acting crazy, and they kind of think that it's just kind of her because of the drugs, and it's giving you know she's having all these kind of side effects and things like that. Um, but don't want to say too much more about the plot because there's a lot of little things that were changed about it. I will say though, even though this is not the uh, you know, an unrated cut of the movie. I, I, I heard, you know, rumors down the line there may be a director's cut or something like that. But even as an R-rated film, this is probably the goriest mainstream, you know, horror movie I think I've ever seen released. Probably, like, the goriest movie next to Dead Alive, but there's technically was more blood in this than that. But this is one that I would highly recommend. has a bunch of really cool you know, um, featurettes on here. The one that I really like was the one with Jane Levy uh, showing her, you know, on the set, you know, basically just like her video diary of the day and things like that. Always really like that kind of stuff. This is one, though, you know, if you're a horror movie fan, you love, you know, loved Evil Dead, I would highly, highly recommend picking this one up. This one I really liked and was one of the best, like I said, remakes I think I really have ever seen. The next one from Warner Brothers. And this is one I was interested in seeing. Didn't get to see this one in theaters. It's the Stallone's new movie, Sylvester Stallone's new movie, Bullet to the Head. Now, this is an alright movie. It, it was. It's basically, though, about Stallone as... He's like this hitman, and it's him and his partner. And his partner ends up getting killed. You know, They're out there, they go to kill this... Got get this guy, but then they, you know, Stallone doesn't want to kill this prostitute, and she has this tattoo, and, you know, the, I, I, the one thing I want to say about this was, I was having a bit of a hard time trying to follow, a, I think that was what it was, too, it was like, something with the story, some of the stuff was a kind of hard to figure out who some of the people were, and how they knew certain things so easily, like, when he didn't kill the prostitute, like, they figured out that it was, you know, Stallone's character really easily. And for some reason, I wasn't picking up on how they figured those things out so easily. But it's basically, though, you know, he lets his prostitute live, and, you know, this cop kind of knows that, you know, his partner was killed, and, you know, so ends up kind of coming along with Stallone and trying to get to the bottom of who it was that killed his partner. And it's one of those kind of kind of buddy kind of movies when kind of reminded me like of um, Bulletproof like the way the relationship was with Adam Sandler and Damon Wayans where like he's like well I'm going to take you in you know and the cop keeps on saying to Sloan and Sloan's like oh you're not going to take me in so it's like that kind of back and forth and it's like I'd love to see you try and all it's a bad Sloan impression but it's kind of like that the whole time with them two like having all kinds of arguments about things and stuff I don't know I mean it's a fun movie, um, but it's not a perfect movie. It's like I said too; it's a tiny bit difficult to follow. Kristen Slater was, you know, I always like Kristen Slater. He has a cool little part in it. I would definitely say it's worth checking out. More of a rental movie though, but it was a fun movie though. 
And the feature out on here was kind of one funny thing on here with them saying, like, go having to go into the this lake, and then there was an alligator in there, and there Sloan's like, oh, I thought they cleaned them all out. The next one I got from Warner Brothers as well is 42, the Jackie Robinson story. This is the story about the first African-American player back when they had segregation on, you know, when they had, like, whites-only teams and things like that. And it's kind of the story about him, you know, and, tr you know, becoming the first player on that team, and then kind of, like, all the problems that he goes through. Harrison Ford is, like, the manager that comes up with the idea of bringing him into the team. Harrison Ford really did a good job. He, he can't kind of became... It was very different than he I've seen him in other movies. Like, I don't know, the way he looked and stuff, and the way kind of he played the part, to me, was like one of the most different kind of characters he's played in a long time. But, I don't know, I thought he was very good. There's a lot of character actors, too, that popped up in this. But, you know, the movie's basically about, you know, all the kind of problems that he goes through, and, you know, going to certain towns where they don't want him there, and they're kind of running him out of town, and all the kind of stuff about him having to try and, you know, if he fights, he's going going to bring negative attention to it, and, you know, that he's on the team, and then, you know, he basically has to deal with it, and it's kind of about all of his struggles and all the kind of problems that he's going through while, you know, doing this. I think it was a very well done movie, and I always like these kind of stories, you know, true stories and stuff. It's a very sad movie, though, too. It's just, you know, when you look at how the things were back then, and the way things were for African Americans and things like that, it's just very sad, you know, just how things were and how people were to people back then, and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of emotional for that kind of stuff. But, I definitely would like that, you know, definitely would recommend this. And if you like, you know, history movies and you like baseball movies, this is a very good one. The next one I got from Shout Factory, Scream Factory line is The Fog. Now, I love these covers that they're putting, you know, having commissioned to be made for their Scream Factory lines. Really, really well done cover on these. All of them have been really cool. Now, this movie was, you know, directed by John Carpenter. I think it was like. He did it right. I think it was his first film after Halloween. I'm pretty sure. I think it was like 19, yeah, 1980. So it was like two years after Halloween. Um, it was kind of funny. I haven't seen this one in a long time. And for some reason I had forgotten that Jamie Lee Curtis was in this one. I guess it was it was kind of one of the ones of his that I had not seen that many times. Uh, I remember too as a kid when I first saw the movie. I used to tape things off of, you know, USA Up All Night. I used to tape horror movies and things like that. I remember the opening with the, the captain telling the kids the story always extremely creeped me out. I don't even think I could sit, you know, watch the movie. Something about the movie, just the whole vibe and tone of the movie, really creeped me out as a kid. The movie's basically about, you know, this, ta this small town, and I, for some reason I used to think it was like in Maine or a place like that. I didn't realize it was in California. But it was this small town and about, like, what the founding fathers of this town, you know, it's the 100th anniversary of the town and what the founding fathers of the town did. And, you know, people, you know, revenge for that. And it's basically about, you know, pirates getting revenge because of something that they, it was done to them by the founding fathers. And then they come in the fog. So the fog starts rolling in. And that's the coolest stuff in this movie is the stuff like some extremely creepy sequences of fog and the pirates in the fog and sneaking up. What's funny about this movie, too, is it's rated R. But it's I don't feel like it's one that if it was made today, I know it was remade, but if like this movie came out now, I don't know if it would get an R rating, you know, compared to what they can show now back to compared to back then because it's not like a real gory kind of movie it's more like implied and just sort of creepy but it's about you know the fall coming in adrian Barbeau plays the character who's in the lighthouse who has this radio show and she's kind of like the person who gives everyone the news and is kind of giving all the news of what's going on and the fog's coming and let you know over the radio and things like that this is just a really good one, and it's got a whole bunch of features on here. My favorite one on here is the stuff with Sean Clark doing the tours of, you know, where the movie was filmed and showing it now and things like that. But this one looks absolutely great on Blu-ray. Would highly recommend this one. Really, really like this. And like this one a lot more than I did when I was younger. Uh, the next one, this is, you know, a, you know, a truly cheesy, it's, and this is what the whole point of this movie was, even the director says, this is supposed to be a cheesy, silly, not take it seriously movie. It was interesting too hearing that 
the whole aspect of the space, which you see in the beginning, and finding out that he was an astronaut and all that, was really not supposed to be known until the end of the movie. And I kind of wish they would have done that. When you hear his idea about what the original idea was on the, on the features on this, what's the Incredible Melting Man? This is another one that has never looked better. You know, this is also one that, you know, if you've been to horror convention, you've always seen this one bootlegged. You know, the thing I love about Shout Factory and the Scream Factory line and all these kind of things is I can just see the bootleg throwing away all these copies of things because Shout Factory is putting out stuff that you know people had never thought would which is what I, what I love about them is that they're putting out so many lesser known and movies that have like a cult following and things like that but this movie is about a guy who goes into space and he ends up getting you know to you know in Saturn and gets kind of radiated and comes back and he's all burned and he's like the melting man and escapes from jail and there's this great scene of him chasing this nurse and her flying out of the window and through the gra through the glass and the whole movie is really just about this guy melting and like falling apart and his ears coming off and things like that and he's just going kind of going around killing people and then one guy's you know the cops and stuff are trying to find him and track him down but that's essentially the movie but it's you know Stan um was it was we yeah, Rick Baker did the effects in this and it's cool effects you know melting things like that so that's basically the plot of it it's just you know him going around melting everywhere but a really fun one and this one kind of is a similar kind of a movie this is from Synops and it's Street Trash this is a really really cool one it's kind of funny too I haven't seen this in a, in a while and I didn't realize the 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 kind of at one aspect with the liquor in this there was more to it I, I kind of when I thought back on it I always thought of just kind of the meltings and stuff like that but this is about a kind of community of homeless people that live in a junkyard in this whole tire yard and it's kind of like some of them are from Vietnam and they're Vietnam vets and kind of they're all sort of shell shocked and the one guy's kind of crazy and there are some scary looking people in this. They, they found some truly creepy, freaky people to you know for the cast of this movie. But it's basically about the this um, this guy who works at a liquor store ends up bringing out this finding in the wall this old Viper liquor that he gets rid of. It's been expired for years. Sells it for a dollar, and these homeless people are buying it, and it's you know making them melt. The one guy melts in the toilet. It's kind of about that, and then about. The you know mainly about this these two brothers and stuff who are living in this you know tire community in the junkyard and kind of all the weird things that are going on there. But this one too, I couldn't believe how good this one looked. Like, yeah, I, I it's almost like it was shot yesterday, and you would never expect a movie like this to look as as good as it does. But that's one that's a really fun one. The next one from Synopsis as well is The Hands of the Ripper which is a movie about Jack the Ripper's daughter, and it's about, you know, this girl who ends up witnessing, you know, her father, who's Jack the Ripper, killing her mother, and it's her years later, she's living with this, um, like kind of this, like kind of this woman who does, you know, tarot card readings and tells fortunes and things like that, and for some reason it doesn't hit her till later when she starts kind of going crazy, but every time she sees, like, reflective things and jewelry and certain things they kind of trigger the memory of what her father did and he kind of she kind of like goes crazy and kills people and they, they did some kind of cool techniques with like having the hand her hand look like her father's hairy hand as director ripper and kind of i don't know it's just this weird one i like this one it was a hammer horror film um but it was about kind of her and then she gets it lives in with this guy and she's trying to kind of study her and figure out what's going on and kind of trying to help her and still she's like killing everybody. But I thought this was a good one. The next one I got from Anchor Bay is a Demented, which is a zombie film. It's basically about these six college friends and they end up, you know, they're staying at the one friend's kind of country house, kind of not you know, kind of in the middle of a small town, not a whole lot of things around. And they end up hearing that there is a terrorist attack coming. They hear it from the father and that there is this bomb that's going to fall and basically the bomb lets out this kind of chemical that turns people into zombies and they're kind of like fast they're kind of like 28 days later which more you know people say infected but it's kind of like that it's zombies but not exactly because it was pretty much zombies but they're running really fast and more like crazy like just acting nuts and like have super strength things like that and you know they end up breaking you know because there's a, the house that they're in there's all kinds of windows everywhere so the zombies just run right through them so the friends are have to kind of like hide out in the house and it's one of those kind of things you know them trying to escape and trying to figure 
figure out what they're going to do. And I just thought, I thought it was a pretty, you know, interesting zombie movie. Nothing, you know, majorly different or anything like that. But I always love these kind of zombie movies. And that was basically what it was with them trying to basically get out of this town. And, you know, all the kind of things they were going through to try and get out of there. And the next one I got from MPI. This is one that I was really looking forward to watching. And it's Would You Rather... Got a whole bunch of different people in it. Brittany Snow, Jeffrey Combs, Sasa Gray. The one guy from uh, My Name is Earl was in it. Uh, J- who played Jamie Presley's boyfriend in the show. Like, I can't remember what his character name is, was in that. But, you know, I thought it was kind of funny that he was in this. Because he, he always has that same look. You know, like he was in it, Name is Earl. Like, I don't know. It's, he's kind of like Jason Lee. Like, they always keep their same style and look. But the movie was basically about Jeffrey Combs, who's this kind of rich guy that you know, has this kind of party every once in a while where he invites people that he thinks deserve it, and at the end of the night, he's going to give the winner of whatever he's going to do at this party, you know, money for whatever their problem is. You know, they all have their own issues and things like that. So, you know, all the people get there. Brittany Snow's character's brother, you know, has a disease and needs a certain type of... um, you know, surgery and a bone marrow transplant, all this kind of things, but doesn't have the money for it. And, you know, Jeffrey Combs' character is like, oh, I'm going to give whoever wins the money. But when they get there, it's, you know, they have to do these kind of challenges that are timed. When it's, would you rather, would you rather do this? Would you rather electrocute yourself or electrocute this partner? Would you rather stab yourself? You know, it's, I'm not going to say all the stuff they do, but it's all these different things that they do. And it keeps getting worse and worse, the things they have to go through. I thought this was cool, a pretty good one. John Hurd was in it, you know, who's the dad in Home Alone. I don't know. I, just, I thought this was a really pretty creepy one, really well done. And if you like, you know, Jeffrey Combs, you know, he's in, in the whole movie, not just like a little cameo or anything. And he did a really good job. Same with Brittany Snow. Definitely would recommend this one. Very creepy movie and a really creepy concept. The next one a lot of people have asked me about. And I really like this one, you know, I picked this one at Best Buy, and it's Spring Breakers. You know, it's the Harmony Crean's new movie. Now, this movie's gotten a lot of people who, are, like, either really like it or really hate it. And the thing with this movie is, it's Harmony Crean. And if you, you have to like his movies, and you have to know what you're getting into. And if you've seen, like, Gummo and some of his other movies, they're not always, they're kind of, the storytelling is a very different technique, the way he does it. A lot of kind of images and kind of things kind of repeated and kind of things cutting all over the place with the timeline and things like that and you have to know what you're in for with it this is about these four friends and um forget it offhand who it was like two of them ended up or three of them ended up robbing um this you know diner to get money to go on spring break because they didn't have any money to go and the movie the reason a lot of people were seeing the movie like people who probably wouldn't normally was because of um you know Vanessa Hutchinson's and Selena Gomez. Um, it's basically them going out to spring break, and um, you know they end up meeting up with James Franco's character, who's this rapper, and he's kind of nuts. And I, I love the way he played the part; like he played it really pretty crazy. And you're never going to think of a certain Britney Spears song the same way, and it really fit amazing in this movie. Like you know, it made me kind of really like the song a lot. Like kind of listened to it a lot since, you know, and I don't know, I just like this one, it's about them with, you know, James Franco's character and all this weird, crazy stuff, and he's going, spring break, spring break, I don't know, I liked it, but it's a movie, it's not for everybody, I suggest you see Gummo first, and you see some of his other stuff, and like, look at the trailers and stuff, and because it's a different type of um, movie. The next movie, the next title from um, Image that I got was the Dick Van Dyke Show, which is the complete fourth season. Now, one thing I want to say is this really, really looks great on Blu-ray, and it kind of makes you wonder. Like, I would, I kind of hope now that other type of shows, you know, from around this time and a little earlier and things like that. Like, I don't know if they have high quality files of like things like Gilligan's Island and I Love Lucy and things like that, but it would be great to see them in HD. But the Dick Van Dyke Show is about Dick Van Dyke's character who's this writer, and he writes for the show, and he also does like things on his own. It's about him and his friends, and kind of the things that happen with them. And the one episode, the episodes on here that I really liked was the one when they go to this haunted house, 
and like everything around him is, you know, once they go to this, uh, stay in this hotel and the hotel's booked and they go to this, stay in this cab and everything's moving on there and kind of the resolution to it was really good. And the other woman, he goes to prison and gets mistaken as an inmate. I don't know, this is just a really fun show. It has a whole bunch of features on here, commentaries, a whole bunch of stuff too, talking about like the specific episodes and things like that. Uh, just a whole bunch of different stuff on here. This is a really fun show. The next one, I just finished watching this now, um, Detention of the Dead, and this is from Anchor Bay as well. This is kind of like, they advertise it as Shaun of the Dead meets The Breakfast Club, and it is like that, but don't think, though, like, because, you know, like, Breakfast Club, it's not, like, exactly like Breakfast Club or some of the other movies that like, are like that. It's They kind of, they leave the areas a little bit, little bit more. But the movie's basically about these kids that get detention and... It ends up being, you know, one of the students in the class who's in the detention has a spider on his arm and ends up basically becoming a zombie. And but then they go to leave and run out of there, and then they look out some, uh, the, in the hallways. All the other kids have been bit. You know, a whole bunch of other zombies out there. The main lead in this was the kid who played Jeff Chang in Twenty One and Over, and he was really funny in this. The one really looks like Rachel McAdams. It's not, but like she's like almost like a younger stunt double of Rachel McAdams. This is just a really fun one. About these kids in the school trying to figure out how they're going to get out of here, and they go they go to hide in the one place where nobody goes. This is a library. And there were some funny jokes in there. One thing that happens through the wall, and one and the joke about the computer, which is kind of funny about having this ancient computer in the school. And because when I was like in middle school and you know early high school and stuff like that, I remember like how the schools had really bad old computers. They like were terrible, and that was kind of a funny joke about that. It's basically though about them and like the one kid is kind of like the jock and the popular girl and so it was in that aspect a lot like breakfast club and them kind of bonding together and there's a funny thing too with the teacher and then they cut off her head and the head's kind of around the whole movie this is just a really really fun one and has a 40 minutes of um behind the scenes stuff on it the next one from image as well is The Last Will and Testament of Rosalind Lee, which is one I wasn't sure about, but had saw a lot of really good, um, like, reviews and quotes and stuff, like, you know, Clive Barker, um, Dread Central, Ain't It Cool, like, a whole bunch of, you know, good things on it. And this is, a, I will say, is an extremely creepy movie. Like, cre way creepier than I was even expecting. It's a very small kind of movie, too, which I, I, I like. I like those kind of movies. It's about this guy who goes back to his old family house, you know, his mother just died, and he's there kind of to take care of things, and there's the, there's a real creepy thing they did in this movie where you never leave, and they tried to, you know, everything they can to make it a very claustrophobic feeling, and it is a very claustrophobic feeling film. They end up and you know, the guy goes in the house, you kind of, it's about, you know, kind of hearing things and, you know, kind of things kind of moving on their own. But, like, someone comes to the door. You see him go to the door, but you don't see the person. You hear them. You know, he goes out to leave to go and get something and come back. Goes outside. It holds there for about 30 seconds. Pulls back. You hear something else in the house. It's just these, this creepy aspect to make it feel like you can't get out of this place. And it really works and really has that kind of vibe. And it's him in there kind of remembering about his mother and you know his mother is very religious and he wasn't and you know when his father died early in his life that's kind of when he lost the belief in religion you know in God and all that kind of stuff and the mother was always like well you've got to find it and I really hope you can find it. and all that kind of stuff and there's just these creepy things going on in the house and I don't know just an extremely creepy old school feeling movie that really feels like something out of the 70s like that old school you know slow build movie really enjoyed it this one, on the other hand, you know, I like to always try and find some really decent stuff about movies. I really try, and, and I, do, I don't. I don't like to say a lot of negative stuff about stuff. This, on the other hand, you know, it's an experimental movie, and I, I understand what it was, I, and I get it, but I, I could not get into this movie for the life of me. I, I just, it's from Anatomy Pictures, and it's Blood for Irina, and it's kind of this... Kind of both supposed to be like a Jess Franco 70s film. And I understand that, but it's not like that, really, to me. Because, like, those were all kind of, you know, you know the kind of, those kind of movies. They have the music, but they had dialogue and stuff. They had stuff happening. And this is about this woman who's, like, in a motel. And, and there's no dialogue in the whole movie. And she's traipsing around. And the music is okay. The problem, too, is 
a thing like this, I, it looked really video-like. It looked like it was shot on like kind of a consumerist camera, not like a really great camera or something like, I don't know, just something about it. Like, I would rather it would have been shot on film if they were going to try and go for that look. I don't know, to me, I, I just did not like this. I just, I can't find anything positive to say on it. I just, I, I, I like I say, rarely do I find something that I really disliked. The next one from E1, and this is a really fun show, and I think it was on Cinemax. Yeah, you see, I'm pretty sure it's a Cinemax show, and it's Fame Fatales, you know, this complete second season. It's basically, like, done like the pop comics and things like Creep Show, but it's not really horror stuff. It's more, like, kind of sci-fi mixed with, like, drama and kind of mixed with all kinds of different stuff. The one on here that I really liked was about this reality show and these contestants on the reality show. And, you know, people in there started dying off. I thought that was a really pretty good one on here. Um, but that's what mainly it is. There's a bunch of commentaries on here and some features on here. And stuff from Comic-Con and things like that. But like I said, it's like a pop comic kind of anthology series. And about, like, mainly about women and, like, all these different things that are going on. I don't know. I just, I just think it's a fun show. A lot of cool, like, cameos and things like that. Man. The next one from EI Cinema. This is um, Henrik Kodos. I never know how to say his name right, but I watched a bunch of his stuff. Um, I've been friends with him on Facebook for a long time. Um, and it's Babysitter Massacre. This is a really fun movie. I, I like these kind of things. It's, you know, a throwback to 80s movies. It's about, like, you know, years back, these kids, well, this one girl um, was going out, and, you know, I think it was on a sleepover, and one get, kid ends up getting killed, and all the friends kind of disowned her, and, you know, don't want to speak to her anymore, and it's years later, and all the friends are getting back together for a sleepover, and somebody's killing them off, and wearing this mask, and things like that. I don't know, I just, it was just a fun slasher film. I thought the mask in it was just, like, not the greatest mask. That was the only thing I would say about it. The last thing I got from um, uh, Millennium Entertainment is Mindless Behavior. This is a concert movie documentary about the group Mindless Behavior. This was, you know, it was an interesting documentary. It was kind of about, too, how they, you know, about, like, kind of bands and groups that are kind of made by, you know, kind of put together. You know, not like ones that are, like, friends ahead of time or things like that. Kind of about producing and making a group, and it was kind of interesting about that, and like, showing where the kids came from, and how, you know, successful and big that they've gotten, and mixed with, you know, concert footage and things like that, but I thought for this, for what it was, it was it was very well done, and interesting too, you know, about just showing how they put together the groups and things like that, but anyway though, guys, thanks a lot for watching the new update, and like I said, um, definitely leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up if you've been enjoying these, and if you see me at Comic Con, definitely say hello, and and I'll uh, see you guys later.